Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Uh, today is just me, just a solo episode, just with me. Um, I'm going to try to keep it around half an hour. We're not going to go too, too far um, into the hour just to make these more small bite-sized episodes. And I'm going to talk about a couple of different topics. One of them is what I'm personally doing for movement and exercise these days and why. Um, and know that in my world, I'm not in a world of trying to build the biggest muscles. I'm not training for a competition of any kind. I'm not, um, you know, like I, I don't have any of those objectives. My objective is to live as long as possible while being as mobile as possible for as long as possible and being independent. And so that means I want to maintain my muscles. I want to have strong bones and I need mobility, right? Um, the second part of this episode is going to be answering some of the questions that people have been sending in. We invited people to send in questions on, I think it was on Instagram last week in a story. Um, I won't be able to get to all the questions today, but I did, there's a few there that are quite juicy. So I'm going to dig into those and we'll answer more questions over time. I'm going to be doing these solo episodes every couple of weeks. So there'll be lots of opportunities. Okay. So number one, what am I personally doing for movement and exercise? And I want you to know that, I mean, listen, because of what I do, I do have access to certain types of equipment. And so I'm going to mention some of the tools that I use. I'm not expecting you guys to go out and run out and buy them, but I'm sharing with you what I'm doing and why. And there may be other ways of, um, you know, of mimicking what I'm doing without necessarily going out and spending all kinds of money. Having said that, if anything I tell you sounds super inspiring, you might want to look into it. Um, the good news and the bad news of what the, my job is that I get to try lots of different things. The bad news is that I end up sometimes sounding like, oh, you need to buy this and you need to buy that. And people will often write to me and say, Nat, I, I, I can't keep up anymore. What should I be doing? And I'm going to say to you what I say to them. And it is always that it depends. It depends on your personal situation. It depends on your goals, 100%. Um, it depends on your stage. And I'm going to go back to it depends on your goals, right? So here's what I'm doing for exercise. Number one, and some of you may have heard me talk about this before, and that is that a couple of years ago, I did a bone density scan with um, that my doctor sent me to because of my age. It was time to do a bone density scan. And I was shocked at that time, that my bone density was not very good. And I was shocked because my entire life, I've had crazy dense bones. I've been told by, I once, um, when I used to teach fitness, I would, had this thing where I kept going over on my ankle a bunch of times. And I once had to have an x-ray and the doctor looked at the x-ray and said, holy jumping, like you barely have room for bone marrow. Your bones are so dense. Um, and somehow somewhere along the way, something happened and, you know, I'm on BHRT, so it's not necessarily my hormones at play that are the problem here, but somewhere along the line, I started to lose some bone and that sent me into a panic because definitely as women and frankly, even as men, the last thing we want to do is be, have weak bones because that leads ultimately to frailty. So I decided I'm doing, a, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do everything I can to maintain my lean mat, my, my bone density. And one of the most basic ways to maintain bone density is to lift heavy weights. And so I lift heavy weights twice a week now. And when I talk heavy, I mean, super heavy. I go to a gym, they've got a, um, I, we don't have ARX machines here because if we did, I would probably do ARX. Uh, but the closest place that has an ARX machine to where I live is about an hour away. And I firmly believe there's other ways to do this, that I don't need to drive four hours, um, a week to get my bone density addressed. So I go to a gym where the methodology is 30 minutes, um, Generally, it's only one set. Sometimes they'll make me do two, very slow. Um, and we do enough load that I pretty much hit failure at about a minute 45. If I get to two minutes, then they're my trainer saying to me, mm, time to increase the weight, which of course, you know, is a good news, bad news thing. And we've been increasing the weight a lot lately, which is super exciting in any event. Uh, so I'm doing this super slow, super heavy, 30 minutes, twice a week. Um, 
of weightlifting, weight training, and, and we're using machines. Um, this is not dumb barbells and I'm not doing Olympic weightlifting because with Olympic weightlifting, I found that I was getting injured quite a lot. And having said that, I was doing it in the context of a CrossFit gym, which, you know, I do think that once, I mean, at least for me at some point, I, the injuries were outweighing the benefits and I kind of stepped away from CrossFit, which broke my heart because I loved CrossFit. I loved the community. I loved the workouts. I loved the feeling of it, but it just wasn't going to work for me. I was spending too much time on my chiropractor's office, to be honest. Um, anyway, so number one was heavyweights. Heavyweights is going to be, if you're really looking to improve bone density, heavyweights is going to be the way to do it. Um, other things you can do, sauna. Sauna can help to improve growth hormone, which will contribute to helping to keep healthy bones. Um, another strategy is rebounding. Uh, rebound, like some of you guys have seen my videos on my rebounder. I actually haven't been on it that much lately, but in my new house, I have a spot for it. So I'll probably be spending some time on my rebounder as well. Um, rebounding, interestingly enough, is really good for bone density. Another tool that's great for bone density, and I don't have one, but vibration plates. The vibration plates where you're just standing on the plate and it's vibrating at a specific frequency, um, can be an incredibly powerful way to build better bone density. The challenge with that, I will tell you, is that the cheaper machines typically don't deliver the results. You typically have to spend, I'm going to say somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 and sometimes more to get a machine that will actually give you the results that you're looking for. But that is definitely a strategy. Um, another tool that I use are my katsu bands. Now, it turns out my um, I'm waiting for the new model to come in. I'm supposed to be getting the new wireless model, but those katsu bands are fantastic, not because they directly improve bone density, but because when you're doing this variable blood flow restriction training, um, actually it's blood occlusion. I don't think it's blood flow restriction in the classical sense, um, because you're not cutting off the blood flow completely. One of the signals that is sent to the brain is helps the brain to send out more growth hormone, more testosterone. And so these and more signaling molecules to basically help to build to, for anabolic, anabolism, anabolism, sorry, I've gotten a little tongue tied here. Um, and so they're anabolic um, molecules, compounds, if you will. And so number one, it's going to help to heal from injury. And number two, it can help with building more of the things that you want. So katsu, I think, is a really great strategy. If you're curious about it, I've recorded two podcasts with those guys, and they are coming out with new models in the next month or two. So maybe if you're interested in that, keep an eye out. What's interesting about katsu, the variable blood flow restriction, unlike heavy weightlifting, which requires you to push a ton of weight, um, you can do comparatively less. You don't have to lift as much weight. You don't have to work as hard and it mimics a much tougher workout for your body. So katsu bands, I use them for recovery. And also if I'm injured, they're really great for helping to uh, speed up the, the, um, the recovery from the injury. They're great when you're traveling. Um, they're just a really great tool to have. It's one of those things you need to put on the list because they're expensive. Um, and if, um, I don't know if they're doing a Black Friday deal, but if they are, it'll be in my Black Friday guide that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. We're just working on pulling that together. And um, I don't know yet if they're having a Black Friday deal, so I can't tell you, but I can tell you that it's definitely, Katsu is an investment and I think it's very worthwhile. I also think that if you can find a gym where the trainers are very well trained and where they know what they're doing and they have this philosophy of pushing as heavy as you can manage um, under maximum load um, for a pretty short period of time, like under two minutes, you could get some really good results there. Another um, option for that would be if you have an osteo strong gym nearby. Um, I sent my mom to Osteo Strong a few years ago. Some of you may have heard this story. My mom is, you know, she's rocking it at 84. She's still working. Um, she's a firecracker. Um, but my mom was suffering huge hip pain uh, from her osteoporosis. 
And I would say between OsteoStrong and I believe the Pure Wave mat, which is like a PMF mat, but it's a little bit different than PMF. It's called PEMI, so pulsed electromagnetic induction, which makes it safe for my dad who has a pacemaker. Um, in any event, between that mat and the OsteoStrong, within a few months, my mom was walking without pain. So those things are super, super effective. The other piece of bone density, of course, is minerals. Um, I use B minerals. They, I think they give me the best balance of minerals, of trace minerals. And these are all pieces of the puzzle, right? Everything's a piece of the puzzle. So for bone density, pulsed electromagnetic frequency, again, I don't own a mat, but if you owned a mat, that would be a great way to um, support bone density. But I will say that I don't think that anything really quite does it like that weightlifting, like pushing heavy weights, getting almost put, putting the bone under pressure and almost causing the bone to bend. This is where um, the ARX machines are magic, um, will actually send the signal to the body that they need. it needs to build. Okay. So for those of you who are sitting there going, okay, now, but is there a peptide for that? Um, yes and no. I don't think there's a peptide that's going to build bone without doing the work. Um, and peptides, we're going to talk about them that in a little minute. I don't know how much longer people are going to have access to peptides. I mean, to some degree, I'm sure people will always find a way to get access to peptides, but there's a big movement um, by the FDA. They made a big move a little over, uh, I think it was a week or two ago. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm stealing my own thunder, so I'm not going to talk about the peptides now. Having said that, the bioregulators, oral bioregulators, I do like things like Cartilax, which is the cartilage bioregulator because we need flexible bones. We need collagen and elastin. And I do cycle on and off of that bioregulator on a regular basis to help to support healthy bones. Um, okay. So talking about heavy weightlifting, that's one of the things that I'm doing. I'm doing the katsu. I do some of the sauna as well, but they're more, um, especially the sauna, the rebounder, they're a little bit more peripheral, but they're still going to help with bone density. The other thing that I do is re a type of workout called rehit, um, and rehit is very very particular to a piece of equipment called the Carol bike. I actually have a podcast coming out with them in the next few weeks. Um, some of you may have heard of Carol. You may have if you go to these um, kind of biohacking conferences or certain if you've been to um, the Upgrade Labs gyms you will have seen a Carol bike. The cool thing about the Carol bike is it's it's driven by AI and you're doing very short sprints, very short workout, but the bike AI will modify the, the, um, the tension of the pedals based on the power that you're pushing out. So you can basically get two 20 minute, you can get so much done in two 20 second sprints over spread out over about, I think it's a little over eight minutes. It's pretty incredible. So I don't do that for my bone density. I'm not doing, I'm not getting bone density benefits per se, but obviously cardiovascular uh, fitness, improving VO2 max and um, keeping triglycerides low. And what else does the bike do? Like it is really remarkable how these short little 10 minute workouts can have such an incredible impact on your metabolism, on metabolic health, um, as well as VO2 max. And they've done incredible research around these 10 minute workouts. And now even in as little as five minutes, they've shown can show benefits. I would guess that the five minute workout is gonna work better for a more deconditioned person, but definitely those 10 minute workouts, if you can do three to four a week, they're incredible. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to mimic a Carol bike workout without a Carol bike. So if you don't have a Carol bike, I would say do some kind of hit training. And even if you do like a 15 or 20 minute inter of intervals and push yourself as hard as you can and back off, push yourself as hard as you can and back off, you are going to get such incredible benefits from that. Um, both from fat burning and um, like metabolic benefits as well as cardiovascular benefits. That's where the money is. And when we're talking about longevity, 
the you know unfortunately the marathon running the super extreme workouts the long duration workouts not necessarily going to check the box on the best workouts for longevity and i'm not telling you not to do it look if you're if your nirvana is going for a long run on the weekends then that's doing you so much good in so many other ways i'm just saying that you don't need to be in the gym for one to two hours a day or five days a week. And as a matter of fact, it may be working against you from a longevity perspective, okay? So number one is the heavy weightlifting for my bones. Number two, I'm doing the re-hit workouts on the Carol bike for my... um, for my VO2 max to get my heart rate up and boy, does my heart rate go up. Um, And I'm gonna say both of these workouts are super unpleasant. Having said that, they're super unpleasant for a short period of time, and then I get incredible benefits. One of the interesting things also about the Carol bike is you actually end up burning more calories, if you're into that at all, after the workout. It's the afterburn. It's the payback, the metabolic payback to restore the glycogen stores in the muscles. That's where you get a lot of the benefits is actually after you get off the bike. So super interesting, right? I think it's interesting, but you know me. I'm a bit of a geek. So we've got those two things. Now, the third thing, which I'm going to be super honest with you, I have let fall by the wayside over the last couple of years, and I'm getting back into now, is mobility. And mobility is the most critical piece of the exercise puzzle that so many of us neglect that is going to make all the difference in the world in terms of how well we age and how well we move as we age. Being super strong is super amazing. Having good lungs, super amazing, but being super strong and having great lungs and being stiff as a board, not so amazing. Nothing's going to go well. So I'm getting back into some kind of mobility training. I'll probably talk about it in the next couple of episodes, only because at this point, I'm mostly just doing my own stretches. Um, I will probably start doing some kind of yoga. I just moved. I changed neighborhoods. I need to find a new yoga studio, but basically... Doing mobility, and and I'm serious, like working through the joints, working, getting the fascia to stretch, opening up your 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 rib cage, extending your spine, all of these things, getting mobile through your hips, your shoulders, um, all those mobility, all those areas. If we can keep those fluid and moving, we are going to age so much better. So. Right now, I'm just doing like a couple of down dogs, up dogs. I've been, you know, some yoga moves on my own. But at some point, I'm going to be implementing some kind of major um, protocol, if you will. But I will say to you, if you're um, big on going to the gym and you're not doing mobility work, it's not a good longevity plan. Okay? So when we're talking about longevity, we need mobility. So that's what I'm doing for fitness these days. That and I'm trying to get outside. Unfortunately, my adorable little dog, who is the one of my big drivers for getting outside, even when I don't want to, she's getting a little older. She's not as interested in walking outside anymore. So <laughs> um, I'm having to work a little harder at getting outside, but definitely getting outside is a massive piece of the puzzle for all of us. Um, And especially as it's getting colder and darker, um, the temptation is to hide from the weather. And I think it's important for us to face the weather. Okay. How long have I been chit-chatting here? Holy jumping. Quite a while. Okay. We'll probably go over half an hour. One of the big questions that was asked when I asked people, what do you want me to talk about? Was the peptide ban. Um, And... For those of you who haven't heard, and many people have not, a couple of weeks ago, the FDA sent letters to compounding pharmacies saying that they are basically pulling the plug on peptides. I mean, there might be a few peptides that escape the list, but I don't think there's very many. Uh, Peptides like BPC-157, MOTC, they had already um, pulled thymosin alpha-1, I believe, at the beginning of 2021, much to every functional medicine doctor chagrin out there. Um, Epitalon is on the list of banned peptides. Uh, CJC-1295, which is the um, modified growth factor, growth hormone. Um, Ipamorelin, 
uh what else is on that list ghk okay so ghk copper still allowed to be made for topical use but not as an injectable um and i'm trying to think thymus and beta-4 i think has previously been taken off the the block so it's also not available so you get the idea this these are everybody's most favorite peptides. And the reason that they're giving is they're saying there's not enough research to establish that they're safe. And I'm, look, I'm, I, as you know, I'm a big fan of peptides. I'm a big fan of us becoming educated about peptides. I'm a big fan of us understanding peptides better, but this ruling has come down and it's, it's really sending ripples through the functional medicine um, industry. And it's, I think it's sad, right? I think it's, it's unfortunate that they've gone after the very people who are doing the clinical work um, that can be the most helpful to people. And I think it's very sad for patients. So there is, um, there is a movement afoot. Um, a number of functional medicine doctors and organizations like the International Peptide Society, the Clinical Peptide Society, um, I don't, well, the International Peptide Society is associated with A4M. There's a whole bunch of these guys, um, Dr. Edwin Lee, who you'll be seeing, um, if you're in my Facebook community, I'll be posting a video of an interview I just did with him. I probably won't put, push it out through the podcast, but it'll be available to people in the Facebook community and in my Mighty Networks community. And basically they are joining together. They've put together a, um, a petition that they are inviting people to sign. Actually, I talked about it in my newsletter today. Um, they're inviting people to sign this petition to see what can be done about getting the FDA to change their minds on this. And I would say it's going to be a tough fight because once the FDA, once organizations like the like governing bodies like the FDA or Health Canada, once they make a decision on something, it can be really, really tough to get them to reconsider it. So that's what's going on. If you want to um, sign the petition, you can go to savepeptides.org. And I know that a lot of people are saying, but you know, I get my peptides from other places. And I will say to you that it, I think it's only a question of time before it gets harder to get peptides in any way, shape, or form. So I think it behooves us all to see what can be done about, um, about saving peptides if it's even possible. So that is what's happening. That is the peptide ban. Um, I worry. I worry that peptides are going to get pushed underground and people are going to try to source them from less reliable sources. And, um, and I, I think it's a worry. So be careful, be safe, make good decisions, and maybe think about signing that petition. So that's again, safepeptides.org. Um, also they're looking for someone, if you happen to be someone who's really, really good at, um, technology, they're looking for someone that can help them to set up a patient registry of people who use peptides and any side effects or anything that, um, that, that they have to report. So if you're interested in that, you can actually go to that savepeptides.org website and you can that you can contact Dr. Edwin Lee through that website and he'll be happy to talk to you. All right. So that's the peptide band. And unfortunately, a lot of the questions after that were about peptides. <laughs> so I'm um I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be harder to talk about peptides over the next little while. Um, and I'm going to leave a lot of these questions for the next, um, the next solo episode that I do, but, um, I'm just trying to read these questions to see what might be the next one, um, to answer. So once again, I'm, I'm somebody asking if there's a peptide for the lymphatic system and there isn't, but the truth of the matter is if you want to move your lymph, you're going to have to move your body. Uh, so doing things like rebounding, um, if you happen to have access to one of these, like the, the um, I think it's Normatec has the leg things, or there's a brilliant, brilliant uh, suit called the Flopresso, which is starting to pop up in different clinics that is amazing for lymphatic drainage. Um, they, they, there's, not, there's no two ways about it for lymphatic drainage, you need to move your body and or get one of these systems. 
Um, I would also say in the homeopathic world, there are some lymphatic drainage formulas, which can be helpful, but it's just like weightlifting for bones. You know, sometimes there's no getting around the fact that you actually have to actively do something to help um, those things. So the person who asked about the peptides for lymphatic system, if you have a lymphatic condition, like I think it's called lymphedema or something like that. There was a woman that I met at the biohacking conference in June. I wish I could remember her name. Um, and uh, she just wrote to me recently and she came up to me at that conference. I'm just looking up in her name in my phone. Um, she came up to me at the conference and talked to me about this condition that she had. And I sent her to the Flowpresso booth and she is now, she was so impressed with Flowpresso that she is now opening a clinic in her neighborhood um, or in her community where she can give other people access to Flowpresso as well. I'm moving down my messages. I'm not seeing her message. I'm so sorry. And I think she just opened the clinic recently. Um, her name is... Oh, I have the screenshot here. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Barton. Um, and she she has a clinic that she's opening. Hang on a second, wait for it. I'm going to tell you. One sec, I can find her here. Found it. So if you happen to live in Massachusetts, in Uxbridge, um, actually in Wittensville, Mass. Um, she, she's got a Flopresso there. She's working out of a chiropractor's office. Uh, the it's called her business is called Missing Link Wellness, and um, and she's running a Flopresso. So for the few of you who might live in that area, that would be a really cool thing to get your hands on for lymphatic system. Um, let's look at other questions. People are asking about best peptide or bioregulator for sleep. I just was a guest on Molly Eastman's Sleep is a Skill podcast, and I talk about them there. Um, again, we're talking about peptides. Peptides kind of in the moving out of the gray zone into the black zone if you're going to be following FDA um, recommendations, which, you know, I think probably as law-abiding citizens, we probably might want to think about that. I don't happen to think that peptides are the best way to fix sleep. However, I do know that Epitalon, which happened to be on that chopping block, shockingly, um, there is there is an oral bioregulate, oral version of Epitalon, which is classified as a nutritional supplement, and that was not mentioned. So that is called endolutin, and you can buy that from Profound Health, which many of you, I'm sure, have heard from me talk about. So it's profound-health.com. You can get endolutin or... Um, from them. And that peptide, that bioregulator seems to be very helpful at resetting circadian rhythm. So that would be the main one, I would say, for me. Um, there is a peptide called DSIP. I can't remember if it was on that list. You can find out if you speak to your doctor, have them reach out to a compounding pharmacy, they'll be able to tell you. It might be helpful in some cases. Um, but I think for sleep, there's better ways of going about it. And I did a whole solo episode on sleep. So I'm just going to leave that there. Um, okay. So somebody's asking, this is a really good question, actually. And, and I'm probably going to go over half an hour. So many supplements to try. How do you rotate? How often? That's a really good question. And first of all, I love that this person brought up the idea of rotation. Here's the thing about supplements, right? The, the key to supplements is number one, understand why you're using it. Is this the right supplement for you? Number two, what is the correct dosage of the supplement? These are these are the big mistakes people make, right? The biggest mistake people make is they hear someone like me, frankly, talking about a supplement. They're like, oh my God, that sounds so amazing. I'm going to buy that. Look, I'm going to talk about a lot of different supplements because the next day you're going to hear me talking about another supplement. And does that mean I, be, I, I intend for or believe that everybody should be taking everything all the time? No, 100% no. You've got to know what you're working on. Secondly, I would say that at the very least, unless it's a foundational supplement, something like 
magnesium, something like vitamin D3 and K2. And even in that case, you probably need to get your vitamin D3 checked at least periodically to make sure that it's not go you're not overshooting in the mark. But unless it's a foundational, foundational supplement, almost everything should be cycled. And typically I would say three months on a supplement, take a month off. Maybe take three months off. Maybe you're going to create a group of supplements for the first three months, and then you'll create another group of supplements for the next three months. And then you're going to, you might go back to the first group. Even things like molecular hydrogen that I've talked about a lot, I'll take a month off of molecular hydrogen. As a matter of fact, I've been off molecular hydrogen for a little while now. I'm about to start it again because I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be spending time on planes and airports. And molecular hydrogen can be really helpful at mitigating a lot of the downsides of flying and traveling. So I'll be going back to it. But I honestly, I took a break. I did. It happens, right? Spermidine, I take it all the time. But you know what? Every once in a while, I'm going to take a month off. You have to take time off. The body typically responds best to pulses, right? You push and you back off. You push and you back off. This is like people who um, people who say, okay, I'm just going to use a pedal, like a um, like a bioregulator, right? Like the oral, the biological, the the actual extract of the gland. I'm going to take it all the time, always, because I heard it's great, so it must be great all the time. No, actually, you're better off using it in pulses, like. 10 days a month for a couple of months, step away. Let the body do the work that is being stimulated by whatever it is that you're taking. I just listened to this really great interview Carl Lenore did with um, Elizabeth Yurth on NMN, NR, and NAD. And they were saying the same thing about these NMN, NR, and NAD. Like at the end of the day, small amounts in pulses, understand what's going on here. There's actually a really good supplement because they were talking about, Elizabeth was talking, Dr. Yurth was talking about CD38, which is one of the enzyme that gets upregulated as we age. And it's not that we necessarily make less NAD. It's actually that we're consuming more NAD. And so sometimes just to be pushing more into the cell without being mindful of this CD38, could be really counterproductive and it could actually lead to problems. So what she was suggesting, and actually there's a supplement that does this, that if you're going to supplement with NMN or NR, number one, make sure that you are doing something to reduce your senescent cell load. Um, and you guys know that I've talked about this before. I am using the Qualia Senolytic. It's two days a month. That's it. Two days a month. It's a pulse to pull down to reduce the load of senescent cells. And then for the rest of the month, I'm not taking anything like that, right? But there's another supplement by a company called Nushido, N-U-C-H-I-D-O. I think I did a podcast with her a couple of years ago. What I loved about her formula is she had the precursor NR, but she also had ingredients like apigenin in there that help to downregulate CD38 so that you're not pushing the NAD down that pathway, which there's some concerns about cancer, like feeding cancer and inflammation, that kind of stuff. So the bottom line is if when you're looking at all of these supplements, try to think about what's my goal, try to create groups and say, okay, I'm gonna do this for three months, then I'm going to do this for three months. And maybe you just flip back and forth between two different protocols. And, and that way you're doing three months of this, three months of something else, three months of the next thing, and three months of the next thing. The one thing I will caution you against is always pounding the antioxidants. Okay. Antioxidants are good, but more is not better. You've got to allow your body to actually build up reactive oxygen species some of the time so that you get the, the, these are hormetic stressors to your body. You need them, right? You don't need too many, not all the time. But point is, you can't always be pushing, pushing down because the body needs this balancing act. So for example, um, there was another question that was, you know, somebody wanted to know, what am I taking right now, including peptides? So Spoiler alert, I'm actually not taking any, using any peptides at the moment. The only thing I'm using are oral bioregulators and I'm cycling through those and I never use an oral bioregulator for longer than 10 days and I may come back to it a month or two months later. Um, 
I did do 30 days of one because I was starting to have some issues digestively. So I did 30 days of a couple of bioregulators to support my digestive system, but I'm now backing off and I might do 10 days of something else. So another supplement that I'm using right now is carbon 60, right? Carbon 60 is a very powerful antioxidant. And the carbon 60 I'm using is the wizard sciences, both the neural RX formulas and the Olympic RX formulas. So I'm on my second round of those supplements. And most likely, so I've been taking them for two months. I'll probably buy, well, actually I'm hitting the road. So I'm naturally going to be taking a break because the bottles are big and their oils, not something you want in your luggage, trust me. Um, so I'll be taking a break for probably four to five, maybe six weeks. And then I may come back to them, right? So I'll cycle on and off of them. MitoPure is something that, you know, I will do three to four months. I'll take a little break and then I'll come back to it. I've been using the body bio phosphatidylcholine and that I'm going to probably do a solid three to four months of because I did um, testing that showed that I need, I need more of it for my cell membranes. So that's the kind of thing that I'm going to do more of. Um, I'm using the Paleo Valley Greens right now, the Greens Powder, as well as Paleo Reds by Designs for Health. And some of you know who follow me that I drink this swamp water. And the swamp water is the Paleo, like my Greens Powder, my Reds Powder. I throw in the phosphatidylcholine. And sometimes I'll throw in my my protein powder. Like if I'm doing, I what would I do the other day? Oh, the Paleo Valley Bone Broth Chocolate Protein Powder. I, I, this is going to sound gross. And I'm telling you that it looked even grosser. It was the greens, the reds, the pale, the, the, the beef chocolate bone broth, um, uh, the protein powder and the phosphatidylcholine in there all together in there. I whizzed it up. It was absolutely brown. It actually tasted amazing. <laughs> so if you want to give it a try, give it a try. I do find that trying to take some of my supplements as a powder so that I'm drinking them instead of swallowing all these pills really is helpful for me. Um, but the reds and the greens, that's pretty constant for me, right? Because I don't, I know I'm not always getting as much, as many reds and greens as I could or I need during the day. The other thing that I'm doing right now, and this is again, this is like a two to three month run. I did some microbiome testing. Notice I did testing and the testing came back and said, Nat, your acromancia is on the floor. So I am using Pendulum's Acromancia probiotic. And I'm also using with that, their phenols. So they're doing the phenols. And it's possible the Paleo Reds would be enough phenols, but I'm covering my bases here because what I want is that Acromancia hopefully to take root in my, in my gut, in my microbiome, and I'm feeding it the phenols so that two to three months down the road, I'm off it. And as a matter of fact, I just interviewed Colleen, um, the who Colleen from Pendulum recently, and she her intention in their intention in creating this Acromantia strain probiotic is that people would use it for a couple of months and step away. This is not an all the time supplement. Okay, so I'm doing my run of that. Um, I'm needing some support on the glutathione side. I know that genetically I don't make as much of it. I've got some stuff going on. So I am using the glutathione from Quicksilver right now. Um, I'm using calcium deglucurate. I'm using calcium deglucurate because my glucuronidase levels when I did my gut testing were off the charts. And that's not good, right? Because that means that my estrogen that's being pulled out of my body is getting released in the micro in the gut, in my colon, and then it can get reabsorbed into the body. I don't want that. So I'm doing calcium deglutarate for now until we get that sorted out. And that has that's an issue with the microbiome. Um, essential amino acids, I don't know about you, but I can't get all the protein in, in a day that I need. So I do use essential amino acids every single day. Um, and typically I use it in, um, in, in pill form, right? So I'm going to take 10 to 20 a day, like 10 in the morning, 10 in the evening, especially on the days when I'm weightlifting. Um, I use masszymes, um, digestive enzymes, and I take magnesium. That's kind of all the time. I'm using, um, what else am I doing these days? So at bedtime, I've gone back to the spermidine and I will do the spermidine and the glycine together 
Um, and, and I talked about that in the sleep podcast that I did, the solo episode, um, that before bed, I find it really hits the mark for me, as well as the magnesium. Um, and that I don't do as a pill. I do those as powders, either in a little bit of milk or in one or two tablespoons of yogurt. A, taste delicious with a bunch of cinnamon, and B, um, again, less capsules. I need B-complex because I need that support myself. Um, I talked about the Qualia Synolytic that I do two days a month of. And the other thing that I'm going to be taking uh, starting shortly is rapamycin. And I'm going to do that once a week. And I'm probably going to dose it on the low end of the scale. Uh, the dosing is five to 10 milligrams once a week. And I'm probably going to dose down to five milligrams, if not four. Um, and that's just because I just don't want to overdo that kind of stuff, especially not when I'm traveling and stuff. Um, and I did, I recorded a podcast and it came out not that long ago with a uh, Ross Pelton. And he talks about Rapapro, rap, Rapamycin, sorry. Um, and he wrote a book about it. It's actually, you can get it on his website. I can't believe I'm probably like getting close to an hour here, aren't I? Famous last word on the 30 minutes. Thanks, Nat. Um, and then I already talked about the molecular hydrogen. So that's, I, I think that's pretty much all I'm taking. I'm cycling through my bioregulators as I always do. Um, and, you know, other than that, I... I use the nootropics from Nootopia every once in a while, or I'll use Qualia Mind. Um, I might um, also. I really like the can the blue canatine by Transcriptions. For me, and this is not everybody. So remember, just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. But if I do half half a trochee of the blue canatine before I go to the gym. Not only do I have an amazing workout, like there's something about that combination that really helps me to hit it at the gym. But on top of that, I have a really productive morning. I, it just, there's something about that formula that for my my personal brain biology really hits the mark. So that's it. I um, There are definitely other questions I didn't get to. And I'm, like I said, I'll be doing solo episodes for the next couple of weeks. So if you have questions that you want me to answer, then you could um, either send them to me on um, on Instagram at Natalie Nidham. You could um, go to my website. There might be a way to do it there, but if there isn't, then you could either. I wouldn't do the Facebook group because I'm I'm not there as much these days. Definitely, if you have, if you really want to, you know, spend more time and pick my brain more often, you might want to think about joining the Mighty Networks community, which is a private membership group on Mighty Networks. It's called BSP Community. And the best way to learn about that is to go to my website, which is natnidham.com. And, um, and at the top, there's a tab that says BSP Community. And you can click on that and it'll tell you about the BSP Community. Um you could join that group and I do live Q and A's in there on a very regular basis. Um, but yeah, I mean, look to send in your questions, probably Instagram right now is the easiest way to do it. Um, and make sure to sign up for my newsletter because that's another way that we can keep in touch. And I'm always dropping stuff there, uh, new things that I've learned and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's it for this solo episode, folks. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it was there's something in there uh, that you found interesting and helpful to you and keep the questions coming and we will see you again. If you get value from this episode, by now most of you have tuned out, but if you're still here, you get value from this episode, make sure that you share it with your friends and whoever else you think will get value from it. And if uh, you're inspired, make sure to leave us a review because those reviews is really what helps me to get you amazing guests, and helps the podcast to reach more people. So thank you so much. I so appreciate you guys. And I will see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye.